give somebody a big hug near you. Give them a big, uncomfortable hug. Men, that's for another man. Don't make women uncomfortable. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. You good. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Travis. Glory to Jesus. When Corey came to me, he said, hey, I want to do an acoustic set this Sunday. I was like, yeah, I don't know about that, Corey. I kind of like a band. He's like, no, 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 it's going to be good. I was like, well, you know, we'll give it a shot. It was good, right? That was good, right? Come on, give it up for Corey and, the, and, 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 and homegirl and her friend, Lillian and Anastasia. That was good. Yeah, and that was her friend. Lillian was homegirl. Anastasia was her friend. Man, we had quite the service last week, huh? Who was, who was here last week? Wow. The Holy Ghost showed up, amen? That was a good time. I had a good time last week. That was... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm using the wrong microphone. It takes me a second. It's for, the, it's for the mic drop. I need a mic to drop it. Whoops, that one's still on. Oh, I'm going to need this one. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I do this for a living, I promise. I'm, uh... Welcome to Revival Life Church. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. It's a good Sunday, amen? Jesus is alive. And his spirit is here. That's good. Hey, so we had a good service last week, and um, some people got rocked. That's always good. I want to share, um, uh, Vivi, why don't you come on up? We got a cool, one, uh, just one of many cool testimonies. Say hi to Vivi, everybody. Hi. Is that your given name, Vivi? No, we don't want to go there. We don't want to go there? Oh, we're not going there. We don't want to go there, apparently. Where are you from? Bulgaria. Bulgaria. It's a very Bulgarian name. She has a very Bulgarian name. So we just get to guess. It'll be a mystery. Okay. Don't, my, you don't say it. You don't say, right, it. Don't right. say it. It's fine. My real name's Ventislava. It's a tongue twister. Ventislava. So <laughs> Is that somebody's name? Is that, are you named after someone, or did your parents just yes. like, Yes, hmm, so I'm, be... I'm named after my grandfather. Your grandfather? Yes. And he's Ventislavo? Ventislav. Ventislav. Without the A at the end. So you're Ventislava. It's a, it's a Bulgarian thing. Like, no, I they get it. They add the A, no, and it makes it feminine. That's, and, yeah, that's you know. a, it's actually based in Latin. It's all over the world, right? Like, it, it means... I, re I, I recommend Carla to lots of people who are pregnant. I probably did to you. <laughs> I probably did to you. I fully get it. I think, I think it makes sense personally, but <laughs> people don't get it though. Well, it means wreath of glory, so that's awesome. <laughs> Christians Which, can make any name sound like it's something, right? Like, <laughs> like Carl means man, and Jesus was the son of man, and I'm like Jesus, right? Like, <laughs> that makes sense to me. Perfectly makes sense. Carla means daughter of man. I don't know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So but anyways, we, last week. Yep. Was amazing. It's For amazing. those of you that were here, you that, probably that, that saw. Was, that was, some people were running from the storm. <laughs> if you went anywhere from here, you're running toward it. That's kind of the funny part. Yeah. Yep. But, but anyways, go ahead. Um, so I'm going to keep it short because it could go on forever. Um, so last week, Chelsea gave a testimony. Who remembers um, that? It was amazing. Um, and she it slapped just, the taste out your mouth with that word, right? She sure just, did. There was a lot of power in it for yeah, those of you that yeah. heard it. Um, so I was rocked during it. Um, it just like, um, it really like spoke to me. It made me uh, just really feel, she, she witnessed to people. She goes and she just meets people and God speaks to her and she just gets a word and then they're saved. Yeah. So I wanted that. So I was just praying for that. Um, so, uh, at, following that, after the message, pastor was praying and, um, you know, he was saying, oh, some people are going to, uh, um, going to experience God and, you know, your head's probably burning and your stomach's burning and your feet's burning. And I looked down and I said, yep, all of that's burning. Come on. I was like really on. on fire. Come on. Um, so I came down to the front and I was just worshiping. And for a very long time, I've been praying to, um, just to hear God, like um, words of knowledge for people so that I could 
you know, bring Jesus to Amen. other people. Amen. Um, and, you know, for my life, for my kids, um, and just for visions. Like, I want to see things. Like, pastor Amen. says, oh, like, I see Jesus, or I see the angel. Be like, I want to see that. Amen. So I've been praying for that. And um, when I was here on the floor for a long time, I was just getting rocked. And there was just a couple things that really stood out. Um, and the first was that uh, there was a, a big dock, and there was hundreds of people on this dock, and a huge boat at the end with um, big white sails, and I was on the boat, and, um, you know, I, I was speaking to God, and I said, I don't know how to sail a boat, I don't know um, what I'm supposed to do, I don't know how I'm supposed to do it, and I just heard God say as clear as day that um, he's the sails, so I don't have to worry about Come that. on. Um, and, um, and, and you have been praying that you would hear him clearly. Yes. And I heard like he could have been sitting next to me. Like I heard him. And so like it really made sense. Like when people say, oh, yeah, like I heard God speak to me. Yeah. Like I heard him. Amen. And so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was amazing. So um, that was one thing. And another thing I had been praying for for a Shut long up. time. And I mean, like 12 years long um, is uh, for um, a relationship with my father again um, after my mom passed that. And it, it got really bad. Um, and I just had no relationship. I'd go six months without talking to him, and that was okay because talking to him was so toxic. Um, and so I had just been praying for a long time that, like, he would find joy again, that he would find Jesus again. Yeah. Because um, I did grow up in the church because of him. And then, wow. you know, um, so I was just praying that, and I, I gave that relationship to God because I yeah. physically, humanly, I couldn't do anything else to fix it. Um, and so I had been praying for a long time. And um, a few weeks ago, um, you know, we started talking again, and um, he's found joy. He's found Jesus, and I now love Hallelujah. talking to him again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yep. And uh, while I was on the floor getting rocked, um, I also was telling God that, like, I don't know where to begin with people. Like, I have a love and my heart's to bring people to Jesus, but I just, I don't know where to start. And God said, you already started with your family. Come on. <laughs> Come on. And it was amazing. So, Amen. Stretch your hand. Stretch your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would complete that which you began in Vivi. Father, she would be bold. And Father, every other pe person, she's standing in proxy for every other person who got touched last week, that it would increase, that they would allow you to be their sail, Lord. They would allow you to be their sail. In Jesus' name. Ha. Ah, it's a fire of God on you. That's real, huh? Yeah. It's real. Yeah. I've been sharing it with people. And she she doesn't even need a mic. Cool. And then other people are. Say that, yeah. say that part. Um, so I just, all week, I've been, like, really excited. So I've been sharing it with, I mean, anybody that'll listen. And uh, <laughs> some people are like, wow, that's amazing, you know. And then others are like, oh, that's, wow, that's crazy. Wow, that's something, but huh? But pastor says that um, you can't, like, if that's your testimony and you share it, that, uh, like, no one can take that away from Amen. you. So, like, they can't tell you you didn't feel it or you didn't experience it. So. Amen. Good job. Give that mic to Sarah. Come on. That's good. Come on. That's the anointing of God. It's the anointing of God. Amen. If you got a Bible, turn to John chapter 14. Uh, I have a very, well, I got a message. I'll just leave it at that. You can judge what it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The hurricane passed us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're just left with too much bread and water, right? That's it. That's the big. Hallelujah. 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 We kept telling ourselves we're not breaking out the hurricane snacks yet. We're not breaking out the hurricane snacks yet. We're not breaking out the hurricane snacks yet. And then we just broke out the hurricane snacks. And I ate way too many M&Ms. Okay, John chapter 14. My wife, she needs no, no excuse to buy hurricane snacks, unfortunately. I'm, I'm fighting weight. She's fighting buying me junk. Uh, John, excuse me, Matthew chapter, what are we at here? John chapter 14, right? This is Jesus talking. All right, you got the word of God ready? Are we ready? Vivi got us distracted. John 14, 26 says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit. I, I need you to see this. Like, we're going we're gonna to kind of look at the Bible today, all right? The helper, the Holy Bible. No, the helper, Jesus called your helper, the Holy Spirit, 
whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Let me stop here right now. <clears throat> this is a word not just for the disciples, it's a word for us. How many of you know God can tell you some things and you'll forget them? One day you're praying that he'll talk to you, the next day you're praying you'll remember what he said. Are, are you hearing me? Uh, I, if you don't journal what God said to you, like it's like getting gold and throwing it in the toilet. Like you, and then you have to actually crack these open from time to time and read what God said to you. And you'll find a pattern of you not remembering what he said to you. We need to remember the words and Holy Spirit will help us. He says, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Verse 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Now, Jesus is, is, is showing a contrast here between what the world gives and what God gives. The world gives a false peace. The world offers a false peace that comes from the outside in. If I get enough money, if I get enough status, if I get enough whatever, then that, that, that whatever that thing is that you lust after, it'll somehow seep through your body and into your heart. J Jesus says, I don't give peace the way the world gives it. And he says, I'm going to give my spirit. He says, but don't let your heart be troubled or fearful because you cannot walk in the peace of God and allow your heart to be troubled and fearful. Jesus is talking about our heart. Let, 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 let's watch this. Verse 30, skipping ahead. I will not speak much more with you for the ruler of the world is coming and he has nothing in me. Don't you wish that was your statement? Don't you wish that was your bold declaration that the ruler of this world has nothing in you? That should be a prayer of all of ours. Father, I don't want anything of this world in me and nothing of the ruler of this world in me. He says, but so that the world may know that I love the Father, I do exactly as the Father commanded me. This is really, really important, and it's taught wrong a lot. It's taught wrong a lot. There's a, a false uh, equivalence uh, in logic uh, that is used quite often in talking about being a follower of Jesus. Now, what I first want you to see in this passage of Scripture is that our God is a relational God. He's relational in His very nature. He is the triune God in His nature, and He desired it to be that way, and that's the way that He lives. Now, we see that this relationship of the triune God, it's like a dance. It's like a dance of honor. Jesus is talking about the Father, and I love the Father, but my Father, when I go to Him, will send the Spirit, and the Spirit will tell you what I said, and I love God, and I love God in a way that there's an obedience, and the world can even see that I love Him by the way I obey Him. And there's like, it can almost seem kind of confounding. It can almost seem kind of confusing because we try to put it in a box that we can understand, and it's not really something that we can understand. How can the mind of man comprehend God? See, we keep looking for stuff that we can understand, but he promised us a peace that's beyond understanding. And in order to receive a peace that's beyond understanding, we have to give up our right to understand. Does that make sense? We, we have to stop saying, like, like, I, like, that doesn't make sense to me. Of course it doesn't make sense to me. How could somebody dying 2,000 years ago get you salvation? That makes no sense at all. But it's truth. And if you'll surrender your need for logic and accept that truth, you could be saved. Would you agree with me? <clears throat> but I want you to see something here in verse 31 that's, 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 that's extremely important uh, and goes to what we're talking about today. Verse 31, he says, But so that the world may know that I love the Father, I do exactly as the Father commanded. Now, there's a perversion, a false equivalence off of this verse that says that those who love God obey Him. And they flip it to say, you obey God so lo to love Him. Loving God is the same thing as obeying God. Now, the problem is, obedience will not bring you love. Love will bring obedience. 
See, now in law, you can obey all the law, but it doesn't mean you're actually going to develop a love for God. What actually it produces is a self-righteousness. Now, I deserve the love of God because I have performed so well. And we become our own God. Actually, our own performance becomes our own God. We don't understand why people aren't worshiping us because of our amazing performance. Right? It's a trap that we fall into. But Jesus didn't say, the Father loves me because I obey. He's like, I love God so much the world will see it through my obedience. The obedience was a byproduct of the love, not the other way around. Do you understand this? You see, he's a relational God. And, and as, we, as we look, let's look here at, at um, verse 26 again. He says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Now, this, this, this is more complicated than we let it on to be. We talked a couple of weeks ago about how, how, how Caesar considered himself king and lord. And Jesus used the vernacular of the day to communicate a very powerful truth. Jesus used the vernacular that, okay, Caesar calls himself king and he calls himself lord, but I'm the king of kings. And I'm the lord of lords. He was making a political statement. He was also making a kingdom statement. That I am the king. There is no name above the name of Jesus. Would you say amen? amen? There is no name higher than Jesus. Caesar is not higher than Jesus. Obama was not higher. Trump is not higher. No one is higher than truth. There is no one higher than truth. And God never puts anyone in a place of authority, hear me, and empowers them to sin. There's some sort of false dichotomy happening in our country today where all of a sudden sin isn't that big a deal because God put someone in a position, that's a lie from the pit of hell. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Jesus never wants anybody to sin. And if he's put you in authority and you're not dealing with your sin, you're, you're, you're ready for a fall. And the more public your position, the more public your fall. That, that's unfortunately, like, so for no other reason, out of pride, get it cleaned up, right? Just out of self-dignity, get it cleaned up because... I don't want to be on the front of a website, right? I don't, I don't want to be in the news. Are, are, do you hear me? I hope I'm not offending. Well, I don't really care. <laughs> the Bible says that the word will be offensive. In the, eh, I don't want to get into that either. Jesus, here's what I want to talk about. Jesus is king and he's Lord, right? He is the highest. Vivi had an amazing testimony this morning, which uh, ties in perfectly to my message. Thank you, G Vivi. Uh, you know, Jesus, when, 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 no matter how bad your father is, nobody calls their dad by their first name, right? It's weird. It's weird when you see somebody call their dad by their first name. Would you agree with me? Yeah. It's strange, right, honey? It's like, you see it on some reality shows, though. They'll, like, they'll call their dad by the first name, and you're like, that is just weird and kind of dishonoring in a way. And, the, and, and it's, it's, it's in our DNA, it's in our nature to honor our parents, even if they weren't great parents. And don't let anybody talk bad about our parents. Only I can talk bad about my parents, right? Like that's, right? Because <laughs> there's like this innate honor. Why? Because if you talk bad about my parents, you're talking about what we don't recognize. That this is in our DNA. If you talk bad about my parents, you're talking bad about my family line, and that reflects on me. Right? Because as much as we want to be independent, we are our parents' children. For good or for bad, Amen. My wife and I were having a conversation about this, you know? As much as you want to be independent, you're still your mom's daughter or your, 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 your father's son. It, it is. It is what it is. And Jesus, though he's the king of kings and lord of lords, starts talking about his father with honor. Now, I want you to hear this. The highest king and the highest lord honors his father. Now, we know that God is one, right? We, we know that there's one God, but, there's, but he showed himself as a trinity for a reason. And so Jesus... He talks about how he loves the Father, but in the midst of that, in the midst of him talking about how he loves his Father, he says that his Father will send the Spirit. Now, this love that Jesus is connecting, I need you to hear this, this love for the Father that Jesus has, he says immediately after, he will send you the Spirit. Why? 
It is the Spirit that will bring you the love of God. It is the Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit so we can love God. We need the Holy Spirit. Hear me. When this love of God touches your heart, it changes everything. When the love of God touches you, it changes everything. It is weird for a parent not to love their child. It is strange. It's abhorrent. It's, 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 it's hard for anyone who's had a child to grasp how someone could treat their child with something other than love. Can you say amen? It, it's, it's just innate in who we are to love our children. Now, lions will kill their male offspring. When fathers do not try to create a platform for their sons, we call it weird. Why would you not want your son to be great? You need some healing, right? Jesus is equating the love of his father with the sending of the Spirit. Why do we emphasize Holy Spirit so much? Holy Spirit is what is going to bring the love of the Father. And you can teach it all day long, but as they say, the love of God is not something that can be taught. It has to be caught. You have to actually experience this, this, this tangible love. You have to actually experience the warm embrace of your Father in heaven who literally loves you, who literally moved heaven and earth to have a relationship with you, who literally sacrificed his son so that he could come and dwell with you. That is something that you have to actually experience with your life. That goes beyond theology. It goes beyond good arguments. It goes beyond what our mind can comprehend. It goes beyond, hear me, understanding. This goes beyond that. It actually goes into the natural realm where the real love of the God touches your physical heart and actually transforms your life. Vivi got touched by that love, and she's like, I don't care who, what people say, how they react. I don't care. I just got to share who God is because I know he is love. I know he is love. Love is greater than obedience. Because out, obe- out of love will come obedience. Out of obedience comes law. Galatians 3 teaches us this. Galatians 3, if you read Galatians 3, he, he, he talks about how the law came to reveal sin, not to ensure salvation. The law came to reveal sin, not to ensure salvation, because that can only come through grace. And grace is a manifestation of God's love. Are are you hearing me? See, we could not keep the law. We can't keep the law. We can't keep the rules. We're not good at it. We're not good at keeping the rules. God made it clear, and we like the rules because then we know how to perform. But from the beginning, we weren't able to keep the rules. And yet people come to a Christianity wanting to get more rules, and the point is, hey, the rules don't work. They won't transform you. They, they, won't, they, won't, they won't transform your spirit. They won't awaken you. They won't connect you to God. All it does is make you feel better about yourself. And possibly the people around you might like you better because you're less of a jerk maybe. But the, the rules, the rules, it won't get you closer to God. Now, you remember Moses. Moses originally uh, went uh, up on the mountain and, uh, and came down with the Ten Commandments. Remember that? We have an actual picture of the Ten Commandments right here. Uh, we we uh, archaeologically dug them up. And uh, they're, they're written in English. I don't know if you knew that. With Roman numerals. Even though Rome hadn't been established yet. It's amazing. Do you know how that is? It's because our God is prophetic. He knew these languages were coming later, right? That's how we know God favors English-speaking nations, because he wrote the Bible in English. <clears throat> Let's look at the Ten Commandments real quick. <clears throat> God, somebody is going to get touched with the love of the Father today. And I just feel him brooding in the room right now by his spirit. I just feel him in the room right now, tugging on heartstrings, challenging some people to drop their guard. Okay, first commandment, 
first commandment was, you shall have no other God before me, right? Right? Now, now some people count it kind of funny. They, they say the first commandment is, uh, uh, the Lord your God is one. That's not the first commandment. First commandment is, you shall have no gods before me, right? The second, second commandment was, you shall have no engraven images, right? Third commandment, third commandment uh, was, don't take the Lord's name in vain. Now, don't take the Lord's name in vain doesn't mean don't use swear words. That's, that's not what that actually means. Don't take the Lord's name in vain means don't say God said something he didn't say. You're taking the Lord's name in vain. You're saying he did something. So when a pastor uses undue influence to manipulate people's lives, he's taking the Lord's name in vain. He's using the anointing that God has given him for his own benefit when God never actually said that. Does, does that make sense? That's taking the Lord's name in vain. When you are saying that God is going to kill somebody because they don't, they're not walking out your convictions, you're taking the Lord's name in vain. Right? You are sinning against God by doing what God did not say to do, and you're saying what God did not actually say. You're misrepresenting who God is, and you're taking the Lord's name in vain. We, we have a high value for prophecy uh, at our church, and we don't invite people up to share prophetic words who don't know our culture, because I don't want to have to correct people on the pulpit and tell them they're taking the Lord's name in vain. That's uncomfortable, right? And we don't want to be uncomfortable, right? We like it to be happy clappy, right? And so, here, here's, a, here, um, and so Moses, Moses went up on the mountain. It was never actually God's intention that only Moses would hear from God. It was actually his intention that we all would live in fellowship with him. And so, <clears throat> first commandment, you shall have, you, I am the Lord, right? You shall have no gods before me. This wasn't some rule he was trying to make. This was him trying to say, listen, it's me and you. You don't need anything else. Don't have any other. It's me and you. It's just me and you. Second commandment. You shall have no engraven images. What is he saying there? Don't worship anything created in my image. Why did he say that? Because he had already created something in his image. You. He had created something in his image. Hear me. And when you have an engraved image of God, you're lowering the status of man in God's kingdom. Now all of a sudden, it's not you created in God's image, it's this thing, it's this relic, it's this idol, it's, this, it's not that he's scared of other gods, it's not that our God is insecure and worried that he might not be important anymore. You're lowering the kingdom status of man by having something else in his image. I don't know about you, but I'm made in his image. And I won't bow to any idol. I refuse to allow an idol to be above me. I, I refuse a church building or a denomination. I, I refuse to have any idol higher than who I am in God's kingdom. And then he said, don't take the Lord's name in vain. What he's saying is, number one, I'm your God. I want to have a relationship with you. Number two, you were created in my image. Don't let anything else take your place. Number three, don't let anybody tell you anything different. Don't let anybody... Don't let anybody prophesy anything different that I wanted anything other than to be with you. Don't allow any lie of the devil. Don't allow any minister to rob you of your relationship with God. Don't allow any religion to think that you got to jump through some hoops. Don't let anything, don't, don't, don't allow anybody who doesn't know my heart to teach you about who I am. This is what he's saying. This is what the Ten Commandments is about. We are supposed to be conformed to the image of God. This is, this is the goal. In our full, like, like God, God is not embarrassed of your humanity. God does not regret your humanity. God actually created your humanity. He actually created you exactly how he wanted you. You don't have to be ashamed that you're not what you wish you were. He actually made you right how you are. And by his spirit, you're being conformed into his image. Does, it, does, this, does this make sense? This is why, we talked about this before, Irenaeus, back I believe in uh, 400 or 300 A.D., said, the glory of God is a human being fully alive. And to be alive consists of beholding God. See, when we allow things that contrast or contradict with God's nature to take root in our life, 
we're not fully alive. You see, when we believe lies and they become part of the foundation of our belief system, we're not fully alive because the lie is actually living and breathing on the inside of us, speaking a word contrary to God's word over our life. You see, when we allow the devil to whisper in our ear and say that we're not enough or we have to perform or people are out to get me or I can't really trust or uh, trust no man or some other thing like that, what's happening is we're not fully alive. Because we're allowing the death, we're allowing the fallen one to have life in us, and it's crowding out the life of God in us. Does that make sense? Come on, I need you to be awake for me this morning. I need a little feedback. I need to hear that you're getting what I'm saying. I hope this makes sense. And this is not a physical thing. This is a spiritual thing that you have to encounter by your spirit. This love of God you have to encounter by the spirit. See, God has always been after you. He's always been after a relationship with you. Deuteronomy chapter 5, way back in the Old Covenant, he says, you shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Some of your versions might say strength. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. Shall be on your heart. Jesus was talking about the heart. He said, hey, don't, don't let fear, don't let trouble, don't, don't let that crowd out what I'm trying to do in your life through love. Don't let anxiety, don't let suspicion, don't let paranoia, don't let the news crowd out what I want to do in your heart through love. Wow. Yeah. Wow. This is how it was from the beginning. God has always been after your heart. He's always been after your heart. But we couldn't do it on our own. The law won't do it. The flesh won't do it. We can't do it because it's a spiritual thing. Romans chapter 8, he says, For what the law could not do through the, excuse me, what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, watch this, God did. What the law could not do, God did. What the law could not do, God did. How did he do it? He sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh as a sin offering. He condemned sin in the flesh. Why? Verse 4. So that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Where? Where? In us. The requirement of the law is fulfilled in us who don't walk according to the flesh, but according to what? You see, the whole, you see how the Spirit works here. See how the Spirit works here. See, the law could not create a righteous spirit within you. Can't do it. Never could do it. Never will do it. Your obedience will not produce a righteous spirit. God had to create a righteous spirit, and then he put it in you. Then he put it in you. He put it in you. And as we walk according to the spirit, now we begin producing fruit of the spirit that the law can never produce. Does that make sense? We need the spirit of God to love God. We need the Spirit. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost of God. There is a reason that the enemy has been fighting for several hundred years to deny the active work of the Holy Ghost on the earth. There is a reason why he has infiltrated the church with the lie against the Bible that the Spirit is not at work right now. There is a reason that there is a false doctrine that is being promoted, that somehow you can't trust the Word of God and what it says about the Holy Ghost moving in your life. There is a reason that this lie is being perpetuated. Because if you actually believe this doctrine, you might actually know God. You might actually experience life with God. And it would seem like the devil knows how to, how, to, how to fight his battles. He knows he can't actually defeat the whole church. He knows that. He knows that the gates of hell cannot prevail against the whole church. 
He knows that. So what will he do? He will cut us off from the lifeblood of a personal relationship with God by his spirit. He'll keep us from being Christians who actually know how to love people. He'll keep us from being Christians who are actually converted into the image of Christ by his spirit. This is the plan of the wicked one. But we don't allow that to happen because we've read the book. Amen? We read the book, and the book says that we get to be filled with the Spirit, and we get to produce the fruit of the Spirit, and we get to have the gifts of the Spirit. Come on now. We get to have Him living on the inside of us, not trying to obtain a righteousness of our own, but a righteousness that comes through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen? And we rest on that righteousness. I rest on that righteousness. And we don't produce a new doctrine out of fear that people won't. <clears throat> Paul prayed for the church in Ephesus, and he said this in chapter 3. He prayed that God would grant them, according to the riches of his glory, that they would be strengthened with power through his Holy Spirit, the inner man. Now, hold on, stay there. <clears throat> for many years, when I thought about being strengthened with power by the Holy Spirit, I prayed that prayer hundreds of times. I'd be strengthened with power in my inner man. And that always equated to some external manifestation. Healing, evangelism, miracles, prophecy, some thing that makes me look spiritual. We need all of those things. However, that's not what the scripture says. It's not what it actually says. There's something greater. He says that you may be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. Why? Watch this. Verse 17. So that Christ may dwell where? In your hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in <clears throat> Listen. Listen, <clears throat> I, I, so, I, so I wish I, if I could, I wish I could like shake people into this. I wish I could, I, I wish I could just lay hands or prophesy it into you. I wish, I wish I could sell some resources that would get you to get it, right? I wish, I wish I could sell this to you. I, I, wish, it were, I wish that were, were possible, but I want you to get this. I, I, we... We always have and always will be a house of miracles. We want to see people healed like that. That's, there's, there's no question about that. But where does that come from? Does that come from my need to feel important? Is that going to come from my need to feel significant? Or is it going to be a manifestation of God's love for the world? Come on, yeah, amen. You see, when love touches you, you do stupid things. When love touches you, you do dumb stuff. Tough guys will do crazy things when they get in love that they won't even tell their friends about. They'll hide it from their friends because they know it makes them look soft. Why? Because if you're in love, you actually are soft, like Jesus wants you to be, right? Right? But the earthly man tells you to be hard. That's why so many bad fathers tell their sons you're not allowed to cry. Even though Jesus cried. <clears throat> Follow me here if you would. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 this is, it's such a big deal. Paul prayed that Christ would dwell in their hearts and that they'd be grounded in love. Here's why. If we're all filled with the same Spirit, if we're all filled with the same Spirit of God, hear me, if we're all tapped into the same life source, then we will produce the same fruit according to the same Master's will. Like, we can all take different Bible studies and produce different things, and this Bible study tells you you need self-control, and this one's talking about your tongue, and that one's talking about love, and that one's talking about forgiveness. But if we're all grounded in the love of God, then we will all produce the fruit of the Spirit right what we're supposed to be producing, right in the season that we're living in, right towards the people 
who need it. Does that, does that make sense? This, is, this, this was his plan. This was the plan of God. The plan of God was not that he comes up with new Christian rules and calls them love. The plan of God was that love would dwell in our hearts and this love would just take over every motivation. And instead of being self-centered, instead of worrying about ourselves and being scared that people are going to take advantage of us, and being scared that we're not going to look good, instead we would be so in love with Jesus that we would do whatever he tells us. We would just, we would just feel his leading and we say, I will go do that right now. I mean, a young man hears that his, the girl he likes likes a flower and he'll buy 40 flowers for her. You know, you've seen it. You've seen teenage boys in love that'll buy like the jumbo teddy bears. Like a little teddy bear is probably good, but a jumbo teddy bear must be lots of love, right? They'll just go ex extravagantly overboard in showing love. And Jesus just thought, man, if I could get my love in their heart, then they'll exceedingly extravagantly love the world. To love the world in a way that the world will experience this love that I have for them. This is the master plan of God. It's, it's, not, it's not by putting a Ten Commandments monument in front of the courthouse. It's that the, the plan of God is that we would fall in love with God and we would show that love to the world. This is the master plan. This is it. This is his plan. There's no plan B. This is it. It's not obedience, but it's love. Love brings obedience. Love brings vulnerability. Fear puts up walls. Anxiety keeps people at arm's length. When hurts are still living in us, we don't let people in. But love makes us drop all walls. Anyway, why, why did you do that? It's like, I don't know. I just felt this love and I just did it. Amen. Amen. I pray that we all can live in that love. Look, look, look at this. Jesus summed it up here. Matthew twenty two thirty seven. 37. You shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. This is what God has always been after. This love. And you can't do it without Him. You can't do it without His Spirit living on the inside of your heart. It's not possible. It's just not possible. But with his spirit in you, you can love with all, with everything in you. How do you know if you're walking in that love? Verse 39. The second commandment is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. See, you can love God without changing. You can love God without any great change. You can fake this love. You can call lo obedience love. No, no, clearly I love. Look, look what I've done. Look what I do. Look how I've sacrificed. That's, that, that's, you can fake love by performing. Loving your neighbor is the test. How do you view the people around you? Have you learned to love? Have you learned to love the unlovable? Have you learned to truly make yourself vulnerable to other people? Have you learned to allow the opinion of God to crowd out the opinion of the world? What does that look like? I believe we have a verse on that. 1 Corinthians 13, look at this. Love is patient, it's kind, it's not jealous, doesn't brag, isn't arrogant. Doesn't act unbecomingly. That means you don't act a fool. That's what that means right there. That's what, that's what that means. That says love, is not, love does not act unbecomingly. It means when you're offended, you don't act a fool with people you're supposed to act in love with. If you find it yourself acting a fool to people you're supposed to, you've committed your love to, love has not been perfected in you yet. And it's time to ask God for more love. It's not unbecomingly. Why? It does not seek its own. It's not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered man people in love forgive does not rejoice in unrighteousness but rejoices with the truth bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures all things that's what love looks like and that's what that's where i want to live i want that to be perfected in me perfect love casts out fear i want love to be perfected in me i hope that's your hope as well i hope that's your hope as well <clears throat> love produces obedience 
Love produces faithfulness. Fear produces self-preservation. We call it wisdom. But really, if you don't have love, you better be wise. But if you don't have love, you're desperately seeking love, and so you'll keep getting into bad relationships that won't reciprocate love. <clears throat> um, is this making sense? It's a quiet room. just want to make sure it's making sense. Because I, I can just, you know, talk about what movies are in the theater and We've decided here at Revival Life Church, Shaba. we decided, we have decided that we're following the Holy Ghost. See, it is, it is the Spirit of God that will enable people to be transformed. It is the Spirit of God, hear me, it is the Holy Ghost that will empower people to change. It's the Holy Ghost that will empower people to come into the new. It's the Holy Ghost that heals. It's the Holy Ghost. Ask anybody in here who operates in signs, wonders, in miracles, I mean, the, the, the Thomases, the Ramples, I mean, just on and on and on. You, they'll tell you it's the Holy Ghost of God. It's the Holy Ghost of God, but it is the Holy Ghost. Ask my wife, it is the Holy Ghost that heals hearts. And we've decided here, we're not spoon-feeding people God. See, that Moses system, that Moses system was, I go up on the mountain, I get some revelation, I come down and I bring it to you and I spoon-feed it to you. And, uh, and, 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 oh, Jesus. Um, oh, Jesus. We need to be wise with new believers, what we feed them, right? We don't want to confuse people, right? You're, you're, you don't witness to somebody off the wheel within the wheel, right? Like, we don't, we don't start talking about the woes of Ezekiel in the midst of, you know, like, we don't, that's not, that's not how we, that's, you know what I mean? Like, we're not hiding the truth, but we're like, eh. We'll save that for later. You're like, well, why did he have all his wives? We'll talk about that later. That's, that's another story, right? That's, that's later. Let's just talk about Jesus right now, right? We'll just, right, just, let's look at Jesus. Let's just look at the Holy Ghost getting you filled, right? That's, that's what we're talking about. But you can't stay there. That's not a place we can, we, we can't live there. We can't live in the, in the, in the, in the, in the surface, let's pitter-patter in the puddle on the floor Christianity, right? Whereas we're called to be in the river. We're called to be eating meat, not to be, be served some, some, milky, some milky bread. Like, here you go. <laughs> and so I keep going to these conferences that I don't go to anymore. They're like, don't preach deep. You don't got to be deep. Who try to be deep? Deep? That's for selfish people. I'm like, what? Or what? <laughs> Teach your people. Don't be deep. Just bring people to church. I'm like... How do we connect them to the presence and power of God if that's what we're doing? How do we actually do what's in the book? How do we do what's in the book? Like, I just feel like you guys can figure out on your own what's going on in the movie theater, right? Like, I'm going to teach you the Word of God, right? Like, we're, we're going to talk about Jesus. We're going to talk about the Holy Ghost. We're going to get you filled because you're supposed to be out there being the church. And you can't do that if you're just spoon-feeding people. Like, I want meat. I like meat. I'm a meat eater. I was called to preach deep truth because I like meat. Paul said very clearly, vegetables, those who just eat vegetables are for the weak, weak in faith, he said. Those with faith eat meat, he said. My wife serves broccoli. I'm like, no, 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 man of faith. Sorry, no can do. I need meat. And when you go to a church that ser serves meat, sometimes you got to figure out how to pick the meat off the bone. Amen? Yeah. When you're in a spirit-filled church, sometimes someone's going to sing a song, you're going to be like, I think some of that was meat. Yeah. I think some of that was bone. Right? Like, <laughs> that's the risk you take when you actually go after God. Good. You're in a sprint. Sometimes it's hard, kind of hard to change directions. The solution to that is, and let's all just walk along at a snail's pace. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Shabba. I just believe people can handle God. I just believe people can handle God. Shabba. There's either a massacre happening back there, or they're having a really good time. Hopefully not both. Let me just say this. I still have some openings for men in my discipleship group. And I'm, um, yeah, the women are shouting for that. I'm not sure what that means, but 
Not exactly. <laughs> I, I'm going to believe that they're excited that some men will come into what God has for them. Not necessarily them. Shaba. For the glory of God, yeah. I'm dating prophetically. Yeah, I get it. Someone felt the Holy Ghost when they yelled out. I don't know what that means. Are we good? I'm going to talk for two more minutes and I'll be done. I've already gone long. Uh, and so I'm going to be a little bit longer. Listen. <clears throat> Who's playing the keyboard? Is that you? All right. All three of you. <laughs> Full chords, right? <clears throat> I talked about this Friday night. If you didn't watch Friday night, you should. Um, love will cause you to do things you swore you would never do. That's why it's, it's dumb to make covenants. I mean, it, to make vows. Inner vows are dumb. Um, don't, you don't want to hear yourself saying, I'll never. You just mark something over you. Just don't do that. I said we never have children's ministry. I stopped saying we'll never. Listen, we have a trunk or treat coming up. I, I mean, like, when I suggested that, like, half the leadership team couldn't talk, and the other half just started planning right away before I changed my mind, right? Like, they're just like, you said we'd never do anything like that. I said I shouldn't make vows, right? Here, here's what we do with the trunk or treat. Let me, let me explain this to you. We bless the kids of our house by giving them candy and a fun time. This is your church. If this is your church, you need to participate in it. It's not like a, hmm, maybe I'll help bless the kids of this church, or maybe I'll just come to church and be fed myself. No, love says you're going to sign up for something, you're going to do something at the fall festival. That's, this is what community looks like. Like, I, oh, the church is doing that? Of course I will be a part of it and I will help. Of course I, why would I not? Because this is my community. We, we cannot be an individual in the body of Christ. People are like, Pastor, I want you to disciple me. I'm like, all right. Well, I do impartation nights on Fridays, and they don't show up. I'm like, what does discipleship mean to you? Does that mean I, I forsake my children for you when you don't even show up to my meetings? I got a discipleship group. Guess who I will be discipling in this new season? The group that signed up to be discipled. That's not confusing, right? Jesus laid it out pretty clear what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to get the Holy Ghost. Watch this, Romans 5. The love of God has been poured out within our hearts. Where? Come on, we're going to say it together. The love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. God gave us His Spirit. And people are like, I'm not sure that's for me. How's that possible? I don't know if I want that Holy Spirit church. Then what, is, what, else, what other kind is there? How, I mean, what other kind of church is there where there isn't the Holy Spirit at work? What else you got? What else you got? I'm going to go roller skating, but I'm going to go to the kind that has roller skates. What, what, I'm sorry, what? What are you doing? What, what exactly are you doing? I don't want that Holy Spirit stuff. Well, I don't. It's a third of the Godhead. You're going to have a hard time following God. We need the Spirit of God to love God. Stand with me. Ephesians chapter 3. I'm going to repeat this prayer. I'm going to pray it over you. Paul's prayer to the church in Ephesus. I'm going to pray over you. Shaba. 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 I pray that God would grant you. Say me. I pray that He would grant you, according to the riches of His glory, that you would be strengthened with power through His Spirit in the inner man. That literally the power of the Holy Spirit would strengthen who you are really called to be. The image of God that you were created to be. So that Jesus may dwell in your hearts through faith. And that you, say me, 
will be rooted and grounded in love. Listen, love is not only the ground that you're standing on, it's what your roots are down deep into. The very life sustaining flow for you would be love. When you draw from the ground nutrients, the only thing you pull up, love. When you look around you, everywhere that your leaves have dropped, you only see love. And when the people of your family, over time, look at you where there used to be strife, they now see love. That it would begin to manifest in the relationships around you. And that love would flourish in every part of your life. Father, ha, huh, just, just receive this. Father, wow. And some of your hearts are going to be strangely warm within you. That's the love of God being poured out into your heart right now. I want you to focus on it. I want you to focus on it, and I want you to focus on the love. Wow. Mm, 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 mm. Shabbat. Sheka. Mm. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Um, I, I don't want to get personal, but the Lord has shown me that, man, some of you were just not treated well by your father. Particularly, he showed me some young women who are not, that is not something you want to replicate in your life, but you're beginning to experience this love, and it is different than what you have experienced before. This is pure and it's holy, and it wants nothing from you in return. But you will love back. You will love back. Father, that you would increase it. Holy Spirit, come and fill our hearts with your... Come on, in this atmosphere right now, if you feel this happening, why don't you just begin to forgive people? I want you to begin to forgive people right now. Forgive the people who hurt you. Forgive the people that may have caused your anxiety. You created a block in your heart toward Holy Spirit. Begin to forgive right now. Their name pops and you just forgive them. It's a free gift that you give them. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I believe this is the Holy Spirit. Ha! Begin to forgive right now. You need to say it with your mouth. Dad, I forgive you for touching me inappropriately. I forgive you for not telling me you love me. Mom, I forgive you for not telling me you love me. I forgive you, that teacher, that boss, that friend who, who betrayed you. Right now, just release them so that you can make room in your heart for Holy Spirit. Right now, do it now. Do it now. Forgive right now. With your mouth, speak it out. I forgive you. All over the room right now. All over the room. I see it happening all over the room. Holy Spirit, that you would come and you begin to heal these areas. You would begin to heal these areas right here, Father. We, we are asking for your healing. We're asking for your loving, healing touch. That you would flood our hearts afresh. You would show us that you love us. You would show us that you love us. And that we would never be the same. In Jesus' name. Everybody said... Amen. Come on, let's give it up for the word this morning. Thank you, Pastor. That's good stuff, amen. I want to thank you guys for joining us today. Um, I'm, I'm excited about what God's doing in our church. I'm excited about what he's doing in your life and in your family. I'm excited about what he's doing in our city, amen. Listen, if you need prayer for anything, if you, if you need prayer, if you need healing in your body, um, if, if, you're, if your business is slow right now, if you're, your family, there's things that your family needs prayer for, if you just need prayer for more of the love of God in your life, that you want to be rooted and grounded in this love that we were talking about today, I want to invite our prayer team forward right now. We have people up here who want to pray for you, want to pray with you, want to stand with you in the season that you're in right now with whatever you're going through, good or bad, amen. Amen. Let's give it up for Jesus one more time this morning. Thank you so much for coming today. God bless you guys. Just a reminder, life groups start tonight, so don't miss out. There's still some open. If you haven't signed up yet, there'll be some in the lobby. You can ask about that. We'll see you next week, and have an amazing Sunday. God bless you guys. Let's give it up for Jesus one more time.